Hey, beloved saints. I had a couple people ask me this. Uh, actually, I was trying to find the the uh, person that, the first one that asked. I think it's, I can't pronounce it <laughs> for the viewer. You know it's for you. A couple of you asked if our pets go to heaven when they die. Well, uh, I'll be honest. The scriptures are not, they're kind of silent on the issue. But I can tell you my opinion and my belief based on the scriptures I'm going to read to you. Okay? So uh, that's the best I can do on some things that are just not clear in scripture. So uh, I'll just tell you. My son was devastated when we went into the Baptist church and the visiting pastor, a kid, asked, do we get to see our dogs? Because my dog just died and I'm going to miss him a lot. I get to see him in heaven, right? And the only way this kid was going on without falling apart was the hope that she'd see her puppy again. And the, and the pastor answered, no. Just flat out. They're beasts and they have no spirits like people do. And that kid was devastated. So I don't think we need to do it quite like that now. Uh, I think that we can come to a hopeful and yet reasonable solution and answer uh, based on scripture. Okay, so uh, let's look at a couple verses. Um, one verse is over here. Um, let's see. In Leviticus, I think I had, actually, I think there's, there's another one. There's another one. I'm going to get one more. It is in 1 Corinthians. And it says, uh, this is 1 Corinthians, what is it? 15, 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, meaning on this earth, but like earthly bodies, like we have it now, mortal ones. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So, uh, so the one that we have now, it has its attributes. And then the one we will have, our heavenly body, will have its attributes. But it will be a greater glory when we're in our heavenly body uh, and uh, to, to finish the good news of that so is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Jesus, the last Adam. So uh, that is describing the different bodies and how beasts are different than man. And that we have celestial bodies are different than our natural bodies. So uh, that one of the reasons I showed you that is to show you we are not animals okay i mean they can put us in the you know the category of animal or mammal based on their you know how they put it together that uh uh the mother uh nurses uh is gives birth to a live child uh and a couple other things that they say makes a mammal uh, but clearly, there is one flesh of man and another flesh of beast. So we are not animals. That's the main thing. But also, God has a purpose uh, to his creation. Now, the reason I read you that was to go over. It wasn't Leviticus. I'm sorry. I was reading something else. It was Ecclesiastes 3.21. And this is a rhetorical or like hypothetical question. And I believe it was King Solomon who wrote this, the wisest man that ever lived. And he said, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Question mark. So, uh, the, it's rhetorical. Now, 
if we go over to, hold on, I'll find another here. Um, Psalm 37, 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, I believe that also means here on earth, but I think we can hold on to this as a promise that God will give his children the desires of their heart. Now, if God gives uh, us the animals as a type of help me, and none of them were good enough help me, so he created woman for man. But they were brought to Adam for him to name them. And we were, we were, the mankind was supposed to have dominion over the animals and to care for them and to uh, oversee them. So clearly we're meant to have relationships and enjoy animals. They're a gift given to us of God. I believe that is just another one of his glorious gifts. He created the earth to be inhabited. He created mankind to subdue it and have dominion over it. And everything he put here was for our enjoyment. And animals certainly are such a joy. They are a member of our family. And I believe God knows that. I believe that heaven and earth are kind of, they're like shadows. Like the earth is a picture of what heaven's like. So I think a lot of things that are here on earth, that they're similar things in heaven, like fruit trees and animals. There's mentioned, animals are mentioned in heaven. There are also some, so many species, I guess is what you call them, or types or categorizations of spirit beings. There's thrones, uh, principalities, archangels, seraphim, cherubim, all kinds of um, uh, types of spiritual beings. Um, some of these living beings actually look like vehicles. Some of them... Uh, uh, have animal-like traits, like the four faces of the of the cherubim, uh, each face representing one of the four Gospels, and each face representing a part of who Jesus is, with the eagle being divine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I digress. So we see that God will give us the desires of our hearts. We see that He gave us animals to enjoy here. We see there's animals in heaven. I couldn't give you all the scriptures on those, but you can research it. And so I believe absolutely, why would he not? Why would he give us animals as part to love and to care for? And we are devastated when they die. That's the curse. Death. You know, death is the curse. So I believe that we... We will definitely see our pets. I believe that. And it's based on my opinion of scripture. And it's based on the hope and God's promises and his character of how good he is and how much he loves us. Um, we know how much he loves us because he manifested that love in the person of Jesus Christ. He died for our sins, was buried and rose again. And because he did that, we have the free gift of eternal life. Wow, amazing. He paid a debt we could not pay, and we have eternal life now. He obtained eternal redemption for us, and more, more uh, promises and things to look forward to. We're already seated in heavenly places, by the way. It's a done deal. 1 Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Wouldn't you think if he loved you, we can't even fathom what he has for his children. Uh, don't you think he knows by now that human beings would love to be reunited with their pets? I believe everyone, even the ones we forgot when we were kids, I think every one of those animals, the kitties, the mice, the hermit crabs, whatever you want, whatever ones you loved, I believe there's a strong possibility that the Lord would give this gift to his children to be in joy, of course. 
Of course, the greatest thing is to be in the presence of God and to be able to behold Jesus in all his glory. That is going to be amazing. But I, I think it's okay to say that. I think it's okay to say scripture does not have absolute, you know, evidence of this. And it's kind of left silent. Um, uh, but the rhetorical question is asked. Um, we can see that God loves us so much and he knows we love our pets. Um, he created animals for us. So uh, I think there's going to be amazing animals in heaven. And can you imagine that we would be there with all those amazing animals and not be able to see our love, beloved pets? I think God will. That'll be one of the joys that God gives, gives to us when we get there. I really do. But again, you, I, I have to be clear on this. This is just my opinion. But it is based on God's character and what I saw in scripture, which really doesn't answer it you know directly but i don't think it's right like that visiting pastor to say nope they're just beasts they have no spirit but we see here it says the beasts do have a spirit so all you know life was created by god and i think it's his very breath that what well, was his very breath in man that made him a living soul I think all life comes from God, who is life. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is eternal life, but he is the source of life. So I think he will do that for his beloved children. Let us be reunited with our pets and our kitties and our puppies and for over the years that we lost. I think we can hold out hope for that, and I think it's okay to do that. All right. God bless you guys. Night.